Welcome to Adventure AI, a DND podcast. I'm your host, Alex the Language Lord. In this episode, Jason and Tyler start a new campaign with some young guests. Does anyone else smell nepotism? All right. Thank you, Alex, for that introduction. Welcome to Adventure AI, everybody. We've got a pretty special. Oh, man. Special uh, season, Jason. I'm so excited about <laughs> this. Could be a train wreck, but it, it could, could be. be. It could be fantastic. We we took a uh, a big risk because our dear friend Maddie is not here. Oh and, no! And everybody's going about to find out that she is the secret sauce to adventure. <laughs> maybe, <AI. laughs> maybe she is. So we've uh, we've betrayed. No, we've got uh, two very special guests today. Oh yeah. So I think this is like the, these are people that we care about a lot, even more than maybe our previous guests. Sorry, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even include ma- maybe on that. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are guests that we like more. We invited our children. Yes, we did to come play Dungeons and Dragons with us today. So. This- this is our, uh, what, we, what we call it, our youth episode. Our youth episode. Not kids. Kids seems a little too Yeah, young. yeah. These they're are not teenagers. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're adult they're, enough. Oh, ish. Ish. <laughs> ish. So I think one of the things that we wanted to do is with Adventure AI, we're, we're showing how we can use artificial intelligence when we play Dungeons and Dragons. Absolutely. And today we kind of wanted to show how to play D&D with kids. Because yeah. I think a lot of people are interested in how to do that. Yeah. I think not just like as a DM, as like an adult who may be DMing or running like a kid's campaign, but you know, I play D&D as a kid too. And I ran my own campaigns and I thought it was also really helpful for me. No, when we were playing with our friends back in ooh, second, third edition, I think it was right. second, third edition, but right, second edition for me. But Initially, second yeah. edition, and yeah. then I migrated to third. But yes. So anyway, without further ado, why don't we introduce Claudia Crump? <gasps> Hi. How are you doing, Claudia? I'm good. Yeah. yeah? Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and what you love about Dungeons and Dragons. I'm Claudia. Yeah, I'm 14. I like doing it with friends. I like doing it with friends because um, we just get to talk all the time, and sometimes it's really stupid <laughs> things that come up, and it's really funny. Well, what's the, what was the stupid thing that happened in uh, a previous campaign recently? I was playing with this kid, and he had this frog guy. Uh huh. Yeah. And oh my. No God. matter every <laughs> single character we met in this campaign, he we was like, "Can I roll to lick it?" <laughs> Roll the lick. Roll to lick. Good. That's yeah. what happens when you play with uh, people under. Tw- well, yeah. no. <laughs> Sometimes when you play That's with adults, you also you get roll to the lick. lick. Maddie toes. <laughs> Every episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, here we uh, we just heard our other guest. That is Monty Conforto. Hello, Monty. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm 14. Uh, I've been playing D and D since I was like five. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, well, yeah. And I think because only- you got good parents. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> and. I think only fifth edition, right? Correct. Good, because fourth yeah. was terrible. You you, uh, you played a little Pathfinder. Oh, he would have had to have if he was five. Yeah. He yeah. couldn't have just played uh, fifth because yeah. it didn't come he, out until he, later. He so. started on Pathfinder and then switched to fifth. Before he knew what Pathfinder was, he was mm-hmm. already in D&D. Uh, I'm Claudia's DM. That's true. You guys oh. played D&D together. That's uh-huh. right. Yeah. How, Claudia, how does Monty do as a dungeon master? Oh my gosh. He is a great dungeon master. He draws all of his characters. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, and like writes a little thing about them and he shows us all. And it's really it's like really brings it together. That's cool. that's more DM prep than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler's DM for me and he's never drawn me. I anything. haven't drawn any pictures. <laughs> Zero. Well, maybe honestly, on the maybe on the mat I've done some maybe, mat drawing, maybe. but that's as far as I've maybe. gone. Well cool. Well, uh, we're excited to have both of you guys here today. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to make some characters, and then we're going to take those characters in a later episode on an adventure. So that that is our plan for today. So, Tyler, I say we kick things off, and uh, we'll let you start telling us a little bit about the type of character that you're interested in playing, and then we'll see if we can build a, a whole campaign around these uh, these three characters. I was thinking maybe... Like more of like a vigilante type or maybe even like a smuggler type. I was watching, what was I watching recently? I think we were watching some Star Wars stuff with my children. And I was like, oh, Han Solo is such an iconic character. And there's so many things about Han Solo that I just, I just love about him being like this kind of in this gray space of an area. Mm -hmm. But he's like not necessarily good, but he also is not necessarily bad, but he has done mm-hmm. like questionable things in order to get by and to do the things that he needed to. So I'm like, okay, well, 
maybe there's a character that I can play that kind of lives in that gray space. Uh, maybe this is a risky pick with the youth, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I, th- I it probably doesn't hurt that Han Solo is also the coolest character. I mean, it depends on who you talk to, arguably, but he did shoot first. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, well, let's see what Alex has to say about your character. Based on Tyler's interest in playing a vigilante-type character, I'd suggest he plays a rogue with a focus on the thief archetype. This mm-hmm. character can embody the vigilante persona using stealth, agility, and cunning to right wrongs and fight against injustice in the world. Here's a brief overview of the character. Name, TBD, Tyler. Feel free to choose a name that resonates with you. Okay, great. (laughs) Class, Rogue. Archetype, Thief. Background, you can tailor the character's background to fit the vigilante theme. Perhaps he was once a street urchin who grew up witnessing corruption and crime in the city, motivating him to take matters into his own hands. Alternatively, he could have been a member of a noble family who was betrayed and cast out, leading Mm. him to seek justice outside the law. Personality. The character can be stoic, determined, and resourceful, with a strong sense of justice and a willingness to do whatever it takes to protect the innocent and punish the guilty. Motivations. The character's primary motivation is to combat corruption and injustice wherever he finds it, using his skills and abilities to level the playing field and ensure that the innocent are protected. With this character concept, Tyler can embody the vigilante archetype, bringing justice to the world one shadowy encounter at a time. So, Tyler, tell me, uh, Ooh, what would you think so, of that? Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I said Han Solo, and then I used the word vigilante, and I didn't realize that actually, I don't know if Han Solo, <laughs> vigilante is like the word that most people would use to describe Han as this, you know, maybe he eventually became a little bit like that, but not necessarily. Mm-hmm. What I heard Alex say was Batman. So, right. <laughs> right. So I guess we're going with the Batman. We're going with the Batman, <laughs> which is never a, uh, which is never a bad. Uh, no, no, no. I love Batman. Yeah. I think there's so many good things about Batman. Uh, he's kind of overpowered or whatever, if you will, in the comics, considering he's just some guy with a lot of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but what I think will be interesting with this is I think that Batman, like my character needs like a canon event, right? He needs something in his past that made him turn to vigilanteism. Yeah. Right? So for Batman, it was like his parents were killed, right? Mm-hmm. So what is Tyler's big event? My character, I don't know, the name's not Tyler, but what is, what is Tyler's big event that turned him to being a vigilante? Here's a specific event from Tyler's character's past that could have motivated him to become a vigilante. Event. Tyler's character, let's call him Eric Shadowblade, was once a member of the city guard in a bustling metropolis. He believed in upholding the law and serving justice to protect the citizens. However, one fateful night, Eric's squad was dispatched to quell a riot in the lower districts of the city. As they arrived on the scene, they were outnumbered and overwhelmed by the angry mob. In the chaos of the riot, Eric's fellow guardsmen resorted to brutal tactics indiscriminately attacking both rioters and innocent bystanders alike. Okay. Horrified by the violence and injustice he witnessed, Eric tried to intervene and stop his comrades from escalating the situation, but his pleas fell on deaf ears. Tragically, amidst the chaos, Eric's younger brother, who had joined (sighs) the riot in protest of the Uh city's corrupt leadership, was fatally wounded by a guard's stray arrow. Devastated by the loss of his brother and disillusioned by the corruption within the city guard, Eric resigned from his position and vowed to seek justice on his own terms. From that day forward, Eric adopted the persona of the Shadow Blade, a masked Mm. vigilante who operates in the shadows, (laughs) fighting against corruption and tyranny wherever he finds it. He Uh, uses his skills as a rogue to outmaneuver his enemies and protect the innocent, determined to ensure that no one else suffers the same fate as his brother. With this backstory, Eric Shadowblade's journey from disillusioned city guard to masked vigilante is driven by a deeply personal tragedy and a steadfast commitment to fighting for justice in a city plagued by corruption and oppression. Let me know if you'd like to further develop or adjust this backstory to better fit Tyler's vision for his character. Okay. There was a glaring issue in there. 
Well, what's the glaring issue? The glaring issue is if you were to <clears throat> to take on an alter ego. Oh, yeah, that, I see. I, <laughs> I heard the same thing too. The alter ego is my last name. <laughs> I'd be like Tyler Crump becoming a vigilante. I am known the as Crump. The Crump. <laughs> <laughs> no one, will, no one will know who this is. <laughs> you won't catch me. My signature is the Crump. <laughs> the Crump got you. So the Shadow Blade. I love the. Okay, so I yeah, love. Tell us what you like. I love the name. Shadow Blade for his alter ego. Right. I don't necessarily love it as his real name, but we can sort that out sure. later. And even if we came to it, I can just come up with my own. But I love the name Shadow Blade. What a tragic backstory. My little brother little killed brother. by the city guard of all people, the people we should be able to know and trust. Yes. Um, Makes man. me wonder if Claudio was that city guard. I was not. <laughs> I was not. How dare you? Claudio's like, for my character, I would like to make a city guard. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> shoots little boys. <laughs> 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 on accident. On accident. I it was think that was an accident. Awesome. Well, Claudia, tell us a little bit about, uh, tell us a little bit about the character you want to play. What, uh, um, what are you looking at? I want to have like a short goblin because goblins are really mean in a lot of stories Mm -hmm. and it's it's not like a mean goblin it's just kind of like an annoying one you know like the annoying short friend you want want to be be the annoying short short friend annoying (laughs) goblin yeah with like did jason talk to you before about some the character ideas because it sounds very familiar you know i do in a in a game we play outside of adventure ai i do play a short (laughs) annoying (laughs) goblin (laughs) named piper (laughs) some of you will know that's uh, awesome anyway well Excellent. Well, let's see. Let's see what uh, Alex uh, thinks about your goblin character. Great choice. Claudia's character concept sounds like a lot of fun. Here's a character concept for her. Name, TBD, Claudia. Feel free to choose a name that you like. Race, goblin. Class, wizard. Background, Claudia's character can be a mischievous goblin who has always been fascinated by magic. However, instead of mastering powerful spells, she focuses on learning small, quirky, and often annoying magical tricks that she uses to prank and confound others. (laughs) Her background could involve growing up in a goblin community where she was seen as odd or eccentric due to her unusual interests. Mm -hmm. Personality. Claudia's character can be curious, impish, and a bit unpredictable. She enjoys playing harmless pranks on her companions and enemies alike, but she ultimately has a good heart and wants to use her magic to help others, even if her methods are unconventional. Skills and abilities. As a wizard, Claudia's character will have access to a wide range of magical abilities, but she prefers to focus on spells that are quirky, amusing, and sometimes downright annoying. Motivations. Claudia's character is motivated by her love of magic and her desire to prove herself as a capable spellcaster, despite her diminutive size and unconventional approach to magic. Mm. She also enjoys the thrill of adventure and the opportunity to explore new places and meet interesting characters. With this character concept, Claudia can embody the mischievous and playful nature of a goblin while showcasing her unique brand of magical talents. All right, Claudia, what do you think of your little, uh, your little goblin there? Oh, he's so cute. I like it. I like it. Well, okay. I was thinking, though, instead of, like, her choosing not to do bigger spells, I was wondering... Maybe it would be kind of an interesting character thing if she just couldn't figure them out. Like, um, like, you know, I don't know if it's something you have probably haven't watched, but like Rock Lee from Naruto, and he just like can't do stuff, but he just, yeah, he just figures out his own way to be cool. Certainly. Here's Ziggy Quicksparks' updated character concept with the new information. Name, Ziggy Quicksparks. Race, Goblin. Class, Wizard. Background, Ziggy Quickspark hails from a tribe of goblins known for their affinity for mischief and magic. From a young age, Ziggy showed a natural talent for spellcasting, often experimenting with magical incantations to see what kind of chaos she could unleash. However, while her fellow goblins were content with casting simple, minor spells, Ziggy yearned to master more powerful magic, despite the challenges it presented. Personality, Ziggy is curious, determined, and a bit reckless. She's not afraid to take risks and push herself beyond her limits, even if it means failing spectacularly in the process. Despite her occasional frustration with her inability to cast bigger spells flawlessly, Ziggy remains optimistic and eager to learn, viewing each failure as a valuable lesson in her journey to become a master wizard. 
While she struggles with casting bigger spells correctly, she compensates by excelling in the use of smaller, more precise spells. Let me know if you have any further adjustments or if you'd like to start incorporating Ziggy and Eric into the adventure. Nice. How do you feel about that uh, that new direction? I love that. Yeah, that is that going to be fun? Good. Yeah. I yeah. think I think what we're going to do is if you cast any spell second level or higher, we're going to ask Alex how it changes and what it does differently. <laughs> oh, right. And we'll just let, and, this and goes sometimes wild. Uh, he tends to make things overpowered. So, yes. <laughs> so this could be a, a huge benefit for you, or it could just be a, a total dud. So, um, maybe even it's like a weird, it's almost like a little bit on the wild magic. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we might do everything but cantrips. I think it'll be more fun. <laughs> I think cantrips you've got mastered, but level spells, it out. everything like, else, you're just like, mm, sometimes this might work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. Cool. Uh, any other quick questions you have about uh, Ziggy? I was going to say Stardust. No, no. Ziggy, Ziggy Quick Sparks. Quick Sparks. All right, Monty. Tell us a little bit about the uh, the type of character you want to play. Uh, I was thinking it might be fun to play like a robot character. A robot character bringing mm -hmm. a little sci-fi into. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. All right, let's see. Uh, let's see what uh, Alex has to say about that. Absolutely, Monty can certainly play a robot character. Playing a robot can add an interesting dynamic to the party and open up unique role-playing opportunities. Here's a basic concept for Monty's robot character: name, let's call him Circuit; race, construct; robot, class, artificer; background. Circuit was created by a brilliant artificer named Professor Gearsmith to assist with various tasks in the inventor's workshop. However, Circuit was designed with advanced AI capabilities, <laughs> allowing him to think, learn, and adapt like a sentient being. Over time, Circuit developed his own personality and desires, eventually leaving the workshop to embark on his own adventures. Personality Circuit is logical, methodical, and inquisitive. He approaches situations with a rational mindset, relying on his analytical abilities to solve problems and make decisions. Despite his robotic nature, Circuit possesses a sense of curiosity about the world and a desire to understand human emotions and behaviors. He's equipped with various tools and mechanisms built into his robotic frame, allowing him to perform a wide range of tasks with precision and efficiency. Motivations. Circuit's primary motivation is to explore the world and expand his knowledge and understanding of it. With this character concept, Monty can bring Circuit to life as a curious and capable robot adventurer, ready to embark on thrilling adventures alongside Ziggy Quickspark and Eric Shadowblade. All right, Monty, what, what's your thoughts on Circuit? Uh, I'm a little confused. Does he have like actual emotions? <laughs> um, I think that's up to you. I he he's an artificial intelligence mm -hmm. that is. It sounds like he has developed into having real emotions and and mm -hmm. has become fully sentient. So I would say, yeah, he has emotions, but he's still not uh, human. But but he likes learning about humanity and what what makes humans tick. So yeah, okay. You liking him? Yeah, I like him. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be fun to play? Mm -hmm. Okay. Other question? Do you guys have another question you want to ask Alex? No, I think he nailed everything. Obviously. Yeah. Was that what you wanted? Yeah. You seem a little disappointed. No. -uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. You're no, I'm not. I like it. <laughs> I really like. What it. What I think is funny. What I think is funny is that we have um, a goblin that is just not really very good at what they do, mm -hmm. and then we have a robot who is exceptionally good at what he does. Like he's, 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 like he's like very precise. And then somehow we have this vigilante guy who has to make everything work together for some reason. Right. It's, it's a, it's a, a unique party. Yes. Right. I think, I think this is going to be fun. We'll see, uh, we'll see what kind of party roles everyone can play and, and what you guys can get up to. Uh, why don't we go around again and uh, see what kind of uh, follow up questions yeah. you guys have. So oh. what I was thinking is, we did this before in one of the other ones where we had, instead of us trying to say how it is all of our characters related to each other, we did like two characters related to each other and then like the other two characters, how they're related to each other. And then we kind of like tried, tried, tied this like triangle together. So for me, I would be like, okay, I'll just, I just picked Claudia, Ziggy, Quick Sparks here. And I'm saying, okay, well, what? Why why does Eric Shadowblade, which I think Alex we should probably change that too. So if we can if we can get a new new last name for Eric Shadowblade because I want Shadowblade to be his alter ego, but um I want to know how Eric Shadowblade 
Eric, a.k.a. The Shadow Blade, uh, got to know Ziggy Quick Sparks in the first place. Let's adjust Eric's name to fit the alter ego concept. Alter ego slash name, Eric Shadow Blade. Shadow Blade being his alter ego or nickname. Regarding the new question about how <laughs> Eric Shadow Blade got to know Ziggy Quick Spark, okay. we can brainstorm some possibilities. 1. Chance Encounter Eric Shadowblade may have encountered Ziggy Quickspark during one of his vigilante missions, uh -huh. where they found themselves on the same side, either fighting against a common enemy or working towards a shared goal. Mm, okay. 2. Mutual Interest in Magic Eric may have sought out Ziggy for her expertise in magic, recognizing mm -hmm. her potential expertise. as a valuable ally in his fight against injustice. Perhaps he witnessed Ziggy's magical abilities in action and was impressed by her resourcefulness and determination. That seems less likely. 3. <laughs> Inventor's Workshop Eric could have crossed paths with Ziggy while investigating a case involving a local inventor's workshop. Stop Recognizing Ziggy's wanting. talent for magic and her adventurous spirit, Eric decided to enlist her help in uncovering a larger conspiracy or solving a mystery. These are just a few ideas to consider. Great, yeah. Tell me uh, which one uh, for both of you, uh, Tyler and and Claudia, or the the crumps, as I can. Call oh you yes. Um, which uh, which the uh, which, the which, which uh, connection did you guys like the best? Okay. I like the. I think it was like the third one where we just the third one. Yeah, where we just ran into each other while like I, I think you said we were at a workshop or something. Like oh, yes, could oh, make it really easy to incorporate Monty into that one. That would be really easy. I think that I also liked that one. That was the one where it was the third option. I think it was. That we were investigating an inventor's workshop mm -hmm. or something to that degree or to that in that in that vein. Um, I think I think that would be a fun one to obviously have that be uh, Monty's or Circuit's workshop, right? No, uh, sure. That that whatever Gear Smith, whatever that mm -hmm. guy's name mm -hmm. was, uh, was the evil person, and and you guys like kidnapped him. Or rescued. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Kidnap rescued. sounds cooler. <laughs> Kidnap does sound cooler. <laughs> I think I like rescue better. <laughs> I just don't, like, we don't know right now whether or not Professor Gearsmith is a good guy or a bad guy or not. We were just investigating it. Mm -hmm. But if he, like, worked for that, that, that guard that, like, shot your brother. <gasps> what if he was the guard? <gasps> <gasps> Dang. I like where this is going. I know. Mm hmm <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about my inventor being evil, though. Like, I think oh. it could be really fun, but also, like, papa, you know? <laughs> Stop. That's a, no, that's a good oh point, God. Monty. Um, I, say, I say we we could do one or two. Uh, we can do a few things. We could either tell Alex that we don't want mm -hmm. uh, Professor Gearsmith necessarily to be a bad guy. Yeah. Or we you could just find out. And, uh, of course, nobody wants their creator to be a bad guy. I know. Mm -hmm. So do you want to roll the dice, or do you want to tell him he's a, he's not a bad guy? I want to roll the dice. Yeah, let's right. roll the dice. Oh, let's oh, see what he says. There he goes. I was going to say, if uh, we're playing D&D &D and you said you didn't want to roll the dice, <laughs> I would be a little disappointed, but that's okay. Here's how we can incorporate the elements of option three into the story involving Professor Gearsmith's workshop, circuit, and the tragic death of Eric's brother. On one fateful night, Eric's squad was dispatched to investigate disturbances in the vicinity of Professor Gearsmith's workshop, okay. a renowned inventor and artificer known for his groundbreaking creations. Mm -hmm. The workshop had been ransacked, with valuable inventions stolen and machinery destroyed. Amidst the wreckage, they found Professor Gearsmith himself gravely injured and barely <sighs> conscious. Oh, bad guy. <sighs> During the investigation, Eric's younger brother, who had accompanied him on the mission, became separated from the group. In a desperate attempt to locate his brother, Eric ventured deeper into the workshop, where he stumbled upon Ziggy Quickspark, a mischievous goblin with a talent for magic. Ziggy, who had been exploring the workshop out of curiosity, crossed paths with Eric just as they encountered a group of assailants, led by a mysterious figure intent on stealing Professor Gearsmith's most valuable invention. Despite their differences, Eric and Ziggy joined forces to fend off the attackers and protect the workshop. Amidst the chaos, tragedy struck when Eric's brother, caught in the crossfire of the skirmish, was fatally wounded by one of the assailants. So sad. Devastated by the loss of his brother and fueled by a desire for justice, Eric vowed to uncover the truth behind the attack and bring his brother's killers to justice. Meanwhile, amidst the chaos of the skirmish, a lone figure emerged from the shadows, Circuit, a sentient construct created by Professor Gearsmith himself. 
With his advanced AI capabilities and unwavering loyalty to his creator, Circuit vowed to assist Eric and Ziggy in their quest for justice. And thus, the stage is set for an epic adventure, as Eric Shadowblade, Ziggy Quickspark, and Circuit embark on a quest to uncover the truth, confront their enemies, and seek justice for the fallen. Oh, okay. I have a question. Yes. Did his Monty's maker, was he still, was he still it alive? It sounded like he was still alive. Still alive, okay. Gravely okay. injured, but he didn't die. But he didn't, he didn't die. Okay. die. <laughs> it hinted at a great invention, and I thought that was going to be Circuit. I thought that was yeah, too. Yeah, me too. But oh. maybe it's not. It didn't say. Should we, should we ask How if it was Circuit or something that? else? My, I mean, Circuit, it's your your maker, your, your decision on what we want to do here. Uh, yeah, I think we should ask. Here's what I like about it while we while we ask that or we get that uh, question from Alex. What I like about it is it's tied us all together. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. It's given us a common purpose, right? So now we're all looking for who was it that broke into mm-hmm. this place? Because whoever it was that broke into this place that hurt your master is also the person who I consider responsible for the death of my little brother, which I don't know why he was there for some reason, but he was. <laughs> just hanging out. <laughs> you should ask. Should he just, you know, it was bring your f- brother to work day <laughs> at the city guard. I don't know. <laughs> well, we don't know how little he is. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, it's true. I could, he could be just like two or three years younger than me and be part of the city guard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a good point, Monty. Okay. Yeah. So I like that. Monty, I like them. I have a question about your character because I've just been thinking about it. Is it like Wally? Like, does it like, <laughs> or is it like C-3PO and like walks around on legs? It walks around on legs. Okay. okay. That would be funny. <laughs> just a little machine. And I was like, I wonder how if it was just like got up to places. All right. We're more C-3PO-E. Mm. Humanoid-ish. Yeah. Okay. Ish. All right. Well, let's find out what Alex thinks of Circuit being the greatest invention of all time. Don't be disappointed. If Professor Gearsmith's greatest invention was the Chrono Engine, a device <laughs> capable of manipulating time. It's not you. <laughs> it was hidden in his workshop. Circuit, a sentient construct created by Gearsmith, was tasked with protecting it. <laughs> when the workshop was attacked, Eric, Ziggy, oh, no. and Circuit joined forces to defend it, leading to Eric's brother's tragic death. Oh, well, that's two shots right there. Not Ow. only were you not his favorite invention... But you had to protect his favorite invention. <laughs> and I failed. Yeah. Oh, In fact, and you failed. That might have been your entire purpose of why you were built. <laughs> your one purpose. Your one purpose you was that you didn't do so it. So much disappointment in your father's eyes. What does that feel oh. like? <laughs> Maybe he should be the villain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like this adventure is going to be about getting back the Chrono Engine. Chrono is what it's Engine, called, right? Yeah. Ooh. I think we wanted to get a physical description of Circuit, right? To see yeah. how oh, yeah. tall he is, what, yeah. what he looks like. So let's start with that. Yeah, let's do a physical description of Circuit. I think I have one other question that I would think because I want, I know that Alex is notorious for giving out historically really overpowered weapons. I mean, gear. I mean, magical <laughs> items. So, you know, I might uh, see what happens there <laughs> in a second here. After we figure out uh, what uh, Circuit looks like. Let's see what Alex <laughs> has to say Show about uh, Circuit's description here. Circuit is a humanoid construct made primarily of polished steel and brass with sleek, angular features that give him a distinctively mechanical appearance. Standing at just over six feet tall, Circuit has a slender yet sturdy frame, adorned with intricate gears and circuits that pulse with arcane energy. His eyes, glowing orbs of blue light, serve as his primary sensory receptors, capable of scanning his surroundings with pinpoint accuracy. Embedded within his chest cavity is a pulsating core of energy, the source of Circuit's artificial life force and the nexus of his advanced AI systems. Iron Man. Circuit's <laughs> limbs are articulated with precision, each joint reinforced with reinforced servos and pistons that allow for fluid movement and dexterity. Mm. His hands are equipped with delicate sensors and appendages, perfect for delicate tasks requiring precision and finesse. Adorning his sleek metallic form are various compartments and ports, housing an array of tools, gadgets, and arcane implements that aid him in his duties as a guardian and protector. Despite his mechanical nature, Circuit exudes an air of intelligence and personality, his movements graceful and deliberate, his presence commanding and steadfast. Overall, Circuit's physical appearance reflects his dual nature as both a marvel of engineering and a sentient being, combining the elegance of artifice with the resilience of steel. Mm. 
All right, Monty, what do you think about Circuit? He sounds like Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, he sounds pretty cool. <laughs> nice and sleek, and I like that, like, tools can pop out of him and do stuff. We can. He does sound super Iron man I love it. We have Iron Man, we have Batman, and then we've got uh, the Joker, I guess. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> Very cool. All right, let's see. Uh, who else has a, a question about this campaign? So what I'm thinking is I would love for Shadowblade, as I mentioned, I want him to have some sort of magical item, something that he uses as he pursues the villains and he hunts them down. Some sort of overpowered some magical sort of item because actually <laughs> overpowered. Alex likes giving those out. Uh, right. You know, I just want to see what he gets. I, I just what he does. Let's see what Alex does with a, a magic item for you. <laughs> Here's a magical item suitable for Eric Shadowblade's vigilante crusade. Awesome. Nightshade Cloak. Ooh. Description. The Nightshade Cloak is a dark, flowing cloak crafted from a rare fabric woven from shadowy threads. It exudes an aura of mystery and intimidation, blending seamlessly into the darkness of the night. Abilities. 1. Shadow Meld. Once per short rest, the wearer can command the cloak to merge with the shadows, granting them advantage on stealth checks and making them virtually invisible in dim light or darkness for up to one minute. Mm. This ability allows the wearer to move unseen and strike from the shadows with deadly precision. 2. Silent Step. While wearing the nightshade cloak, the wearer's footsteps are muffled, allowing them to move silently without leaving a trace. Mm. This ability grants advantage on dexterity, stealth, checks made to move silently or remain undetected while moving. It's pretty good. 3. Shadow Strike. Ooh. Once per long rest, the wearer can channel the power of the cloak to enhance their attacks with shadowy energy. When making a melee attack while wearing the nightshade cloak, the wearer can choose to imbue their weapon with dark energy, dealing an additional 1d6 necrotic damage on a successful hit. The nightshade cloak is a powerful tool for any vigilante seeking to strike fear into the hearts of their enemies and uphold justice under the cover of darkness. With its abilities to blend into the shadows, move silently, and strike with deadly precision, it empowers its wearer to become a true master of stealth and subterfuge in the fight against crime. This magical item provides Eric Shadowblade with the tools he needs to navigate the streets of the city under the cover of darkness and strike fear into the hearts of criminals who dare to threaten the innocent. All right, what are your thoughts on the Nightshade Cloak? I think it's a, you could not have come up with a more perfect rogue item than that one, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's not as overpowered as I thought it was going to be. No, and I think having advantage on a couple things. Yeah, it, some it's, there's a short uh, there's a short rest ability, a long rest ability, and an always active ability. Yeah, which so. I think is still pretty, it's reasonably strong, but because it's like a flat 1d6, like it's not like going to scale out of crazy right, for right. like a higher yeah. level. So, you know, if, like, if we were like level four or five, like it's like, really handy for the sneak attacks mm -hmm. as a rogue, but um, not crazy, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it, I like it. It sounds like the Mistborn cloak. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. Mm. That's, that's basically what it is. It's like a stringy cloak, and it melts them with the mist, and it's like super sneaky. Nice. And that, <laughs> that's okay. what it sounds like. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Uh, I assume you two don't want magic items, correct? No. I would like one, of course. Claudia, you don't want one? No. Do you want to be overpowered? No. Why I, don't you want a magic I, item? I was thinking instead of like a magic item, just like a signature spell that I do. Like just Ooh. for oh. things. That's not like too crazy, but just like I always do it. Okay. Let's do this. I. That's a great idea. <laughs> Maybe you could have a magical item that could do the spell. Oh, well, what if I lost it? <laughs> <laughs> you You're lost tired. the item? No, but what if? I didn't know. I don't have it. Oh, no, I mean, like, what if you lost the item is what you're saying? Yeah, that would be very bad. And then I can do my signature move. Your entire, like, personality gone. Exactly. It's just like, in one thing. Yeah. No. It's like, I <laughs> just dropped it down the ravine. I don't know who I am anymore. I lost my watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's learn about Ziggy's signature spell that she and only she knows. Oh. Yeah, this is going to be a brand new spell that nobody has ever heard of before. Here's a signature spell tailored for Ziggy Quickspark, Goblin's Gleeful Glitter Burst, Cantrip. Ziggy Quickspark's Goblin's Gleeful Glitter Burst is a spell that embodies her mischievous nature and playful spirit. When cast, Ziggy releases a burst of colorful, shimmering glitter in all directions from her outstretched hands, creating a dazzling display of light and color. Mm. Enemies caught within the radius of the spell must make a dexterity saving throw against Ziggy's spell save DC. 
On a failed save, they are temporarily blinded by the dazzling display and have disadvantage on attack rolls until the end of their next turn. Allies within the radius of the spell are filled with a surge of joy and energy, Ooh. gaining temporary hit points equal to Ziggy's oh. spellcasting ability modifier. This is a cantrip? Charisma a for a goblin wizard. <laughs> Additionally, any hidden or invisible creatures within the radius of the spell are the outlined heck? by the glitter, revealing their presence to all <laughs> creatures within range. When Ziggy Quickspark casts this spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, the temporary hit points gained by allies increase by an additional 1d4 for each slot level above first. As Ziggy casts the spell, she shouts gleefully, Goblin's Gleeful Glitter Burst, before releasing a burst <laughs> of glittery light that dances and sparkles in the air, momentarily captivating all who behold it. Well, that that's probably the most powerful cantrip in the <laughs> game of Dungeons and Dragons. Claudia, what do you think about it? Okay, that, the name, the name is like, that just sounds like something. Someone would just be like, it's mine. Very seriously, <laughs> they just like say it. And just can can we look. hear you say the name of the spell? Oh. What was it again? Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Uh, you shout, Goblin's Gleeful Glitter Burst. Goblin's Gleeful Glitter Burst. Nice. <laughs> that didn't sound like a shout to me, but you yeah. can work oh. on you can work you on can it work between on that now and then. <laughs> yeah. Alex's broken items is one thing, but that thing is intense. <laughs> that, that is. I think um later it talks about upcasting yeah. from a first level to a higher <clears throat> level. So I think it's this actually is a first level oh, spell. Dang it. it said cantrip. I get that. But it's like glitter dust plus blindness plus the bonus to everybody. Yeah, hit points, temporary hit temporary points, hit points. Um, revealing invisible, and disadvantage on attacks against you guys. I mean, it's pretty strong, but it's it's very strong. I say we go. These for are it. one shots. Yeah, it's a one shot. We, we could see if a cantrip can ruin a single game <laughs> of Dungeons and Dragons or not. <laughs> that would be so. Oh bad. Right. bad. I like I like it. Uh, I, man, now I feel like we should all be asking Alex for spells. <laughs> this is what he's going to be handing out. Yeah, that's not bad at all. What also, but also I think where there is some level of, if we really wanted to talk about balance here, right, is that if we're going to give Glitter Spark essentially wild magic for above levels and do like who knows what, oh my God. then having like a cantrip that is like moderately predictable that's new and different maybe is not too outlandish. So, you know, we'll see how yeah. it goes. Yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> and you got, a, you got a magic cloak too. Yeah, but it's not as cool as that. <laughs> All right. Monty, what do you want? Uh, I think it would be cool if Circuit had, like, a magical item that was, like, infused with him. Or maybe just, like, a magical ability that was, like, with him when he was built. Yeah, let's see what uh, let's see what we can get with uh, infused magic item. All those arcane skills gotta go somewhere. Here's a magical item infused with Circuit's essence. Circuit's core. Abilities. 1. Arcane Resonance. When attuned to Circuit's core, the bearer gains advantage on intelligence, arcana, checks related to magical constructs, mechanical devices, and arcane machinery. 2. Sentient Guidance. Once prolonged rest, the bearer can invoke Circuit's guidance to assist them in solving puzzles, deciphering ancient texts, or navigating complex magical traps. 3. Mm. Arcane Enhancement. When attuned to Circuit's core, the bearer's magical abilities are enhanced, allowing them to cast one additional spell slot of first level per day. All right, Monty, what do you think of uh, what do you think of that uh, Circuit's core? Uh, I thought it was cool. Yeah, uh, I was kind of hoping for more like combat. Yeah, powered. something more combat heavy or powered. Yeah, that's too bad, huh? Yeah, <laughs> too bad you did not get that. You know, um, it's like it's Tony Stark built this in a cave. That's what it felt like when I heard right, was right, right, the right. arc reactor or whatever it is what it was sounded like. It was mm. uh, people from try Iron to Man. take his too? Oh, that's true. People yeah. did try to take his. Should we change it and have you be able to like take out like an arm and have it transform into like some sort of little creature that helps you in combat? Do you want to do that? That'd be fun, yeah. Okay. That'd be so let's funny. see. Let's see what he can come up with that. Here's a magical item concept where Circuit can detach one of his arms, which transforms into a small combat robot to assist him. Yeah. Circuit's detachable arm. When detached, it transforms into a small, humanoid-shaped robot oh, about cool. the size of a halfling <laughs> with a similar design aesthetic to Circuit himself. It's a mini-me. Abilities. <laughs> one. 
Combat Companion. When Circuit detaches his arm, it transforms into a small combat robot known as Mini Circuit. <laughs> Mini Circuit is equipped with a variety of tools and weapons, including a retractable blade, a small crossbow, and a built in shield. Nice. Two, Autonomous AI, Mini Circuit possesses advanced AI capabilities, allowing it to operate independently of Circuit's commands. It follows Circuit's orders in combat, assisting him with attacks providing cover, and executing tactical maneuvers as needed. 3. Enhanced Mobility Mini Circuit is agile and nimble, capable of traversing difficult terrain and maneuvering around obstacles with ease. 4. Self-Repair Mini Circuit <laughs> is equipped with self-repair mechanisms that heck? allow it to heal minor damage sustained in combat. It regenerates 1d4 hit points at the start of each of Circuit's turns, <laughs> what? allowing it to endure prolonged engagements without needing external repairs. 5. Limited Duration The transformation of Circuit's detachable arm into Mini Circuit lasts for one hour or until Circuit reattaches the arm, whichever comes first. After the duration expires, Mini Circuit reverts back into the detached arm, ready to be reattached to Circuit's body. Circuit's detachable arm and Mini Circuit provide a versatile combat option for Circuit, allowing him to adapt to various situations and challenges on the battlefield. All right, Monty, what are your thoughts on Mini Circuit? I think I'm in love. I just like that's just like a little guy that looks exactly like me. <laughs> he's just like, he's jacked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he sounds pretty what's awesome. The, what's with his regeneration ability, though? <laughs> he's like a freaking troll. <laughs> <laughs> no 1D4. weakness. 1d4 <laughs> per round per at the round, beginning of every yeah. turn. He just gets it back. He's just like, mm, yeah. No, um, okay. Also, it says it lasts for an hour or until he puts it back on. But there's no, there was no limitation on how often you can use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can just stay yeah. on. I, should we make that a short rest thing, a long rest thing? Yeah, we probably should, but that's, a, you know, it's up to you. Like, you yeah. know what? We'll just, we'll play that by ear. I think, okay. uh, I think he's too cool to limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, your, your character's like six feet tall, right? Well, yeah. And I'm a goblin. That means that that robot's like <laughs> my size. <laughs> Yeah, the, just, I mean, if he takes the whole arm off, it's yeah. not out. You know, it's outrageous to think that a six foot tall man. Well, it's my like my arm is like two and a half feet already. So. Yeah, and then you know <laughs> things extend and grow and it'd be yeah. so Robot. intimidating. Yeah, I think I would hide from. It. It's kind of cool to think of like. <clears throat> To you know, Eric and the six foot robot, and Ziggy and the the two foot robot oh fighting gosh. side by side. What's funny to it? What's funny though, or I guess what's mo moderately interesting about it, as I think about it for you, Monty, is mm -hmm. that um, you do get the benefit of having the mini robot and doing the things, but you then get the disadvantage of not having an arm. You're not like two weapon fighting necessarily. But you can't hold a sword and a shield. But you can't hold a sword and a shield. You like, can't. Yeah. You can't fire a bow and arrow. You can't fire mm -hmm. a bow yeah, and arrow, yeah. right? You yeah. can't. Uh, you, maybe you'll have difficulty climbing or holding on right. to things. So I think mm -hmm. that there are a few things about it that are maybe a mm -hmm. little bit. Well, for the, sure, we'll play with the on uh, the power side, yeah. especially the regeneration. That one yeah. was, you know, a little <laughs> out of left field. But I actually really like the idea of having what essentially is a pe a personal penalty for this extended benefit. Yeah. I really yeah. like that. Great, uh, great characters, guys. I think I, they're so they're great. Next time. We're going to prep a, a small adventure for you guys to go on. And then when we get together, we will play that adventure. So thanks for joining us on Adventure AI, and we'll catch you next week. Oh, no, two weeks. We do this every two weeks now, Every right? two weeks. Every we release weeks. every two weeks. All right, perfect. Thanks for joining us. Join us next time on Adventure AI, where I, Alex the Language Lord, will come up with a thrilling adventure for these kids and their quest to recover the Chrono Engine. <laughs>